Last month, we invited Daniel Drum, the chair of the New York City Council's Education Committee, on to our show. He was here to address concerns over whether or not Hasidic yeshivas, most of them right here in Brooklyn, are fulfilling the state's guidelines requiring private schools to provide an education substantially equivalent to that of public schools. Now, this followed the Department of Education's promise to look into charges that many yeshivas are offering little or no secular education, and thus leaving their students unprepared for the secular world. Today, we want to welcome three people involved with the issue. First, the man heading the group behind the charges against the yeshivas, Naftali Moster. He's the executive director of Yafed, Young Advocates for Fair Education. Welcome to BK Live, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Joining him is Ezra Friedlander, the founder and CEO of the Friedlander Group. They're a political public relations firm working on behalf of, the, of many of the yeshivas. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Last Should just make a note, I am not working on behalf of the yeshivas. Okay. I'm here in my own capacity. All right. We'll for better or for worse. That, such as you are. And last and definitely not least, Amy Sarah Clark, who's been reporting on the controversy for the Jewish Week and WNYC Radio. Thanks for joining us at the table. Finally, we pulled you in. So uh, just, we got that straight. You're here on behalf of yourself as a concerned member of the community. Is that fair? That's where Correct. we're starting from? All right. As a parent. As as a parent. As a product of the yeshiva system. Well, then we have two. Yep. So I'm going to ask you both, as products of the yeshiva system, what is the purpose of the yeshivas as you see them? Let's start with you. The yeshiva is an educational organization uh, that uh, should guide uh, the youth of our generation to follow in the footsteps and the path uh, of our uh, parents, grandparents ancestors, mm -hmm. it's all encompassing. It should prepare you to be uh, a good Jew yeah. and a productive citizen. Okay, so Naftali, what's your working definition yeah, of what I, the I don't. I, I agree with Ezra on that, but I was thinking, if, if you don't mind, I would like to give some more background, because I know you introduced the issue, mm -hmm. but I feel like, especially a show that caters to a lot of non-Jewish people, they might not understand the exact um, issue. So, if you don't mind, I want to give some more background. So, how these yeshivas do operate, because a lot of people, um, you know, they say, oh, well, a lot of public schools are also not functioning well. You know, there are a lot of failing public schools, so what's the difference? But, you know, there's a big difference, because first of all, in public schools, uh, as you know, some of them fail, but the fact is that they teach the subjects that are required by the state, which includes English, math, science, history, geography, music, art, yeah. and so forth. In yeshivas, we're talking about a problem where the yeshivas don't even teach the subjects. So even if someone is a bright student, mm -hmm. you know, a genius even, they can't learn if they're not being taught. So that's, that's the uh, crux of the issue. But, um, but further, to break it down further, I, I feel like people also misunderstand the, um, the difference between Jewish, ultra-Orthodox Jewish. So I also want to discuss that because I feel, I think Ezra would agree that just painting it all with one brush is not, is not appropriate. Which is why I ask, what is the purpose of the yeshivas then, in your opinion? Right. So, so Let's talk about the, the Jewish community is, is a wide spectrum. You have um, um, Reform, Conservative, Modern Orthodox, and then you have the Ultra-Orthodox. So, right. so the Ultra-Orthodox group itself is broken down into two groups, the Hasidic and the Litvish, or Yeshivish. The name is Yeshivish, but both groups attend Yeshiva. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so the problem that we're addressing is primarily among the Hasidic group and primarily among boys. So right. the, the boys' Yeshivas, most of them, I would say as many as 90%, fail to meet the minimum state requirements. And by that, we also, we also we, we like to break it down in terms of quantity and quality. So in terms of quantity, these yeshivas, they, they don't provide, they don't teach the subjects that are required. They don't teach it for enough hours per day to actually be able to learn anything. And they don't teach it for uh, enough, for as many years as they should, because they're supposed to teach it all through high school, yeah. and they end at the age of like 13 between 12 and 14 for the most part. So these are the, that's as far as quantity goes. And as far as quality is the attitude towards education is also very uh, negative, I should say. Um, so again, you know, that's the question. What is the purpose of the yeshiva there? Right, just one more thing. Uh, also, also the, <laughs> just the, answer the question. We're going to have the discussion, but what is the purpose? What's the stated purpose? Like of I the said, I, I agree with Ezra, um, you know, with regards to the purpose. The purpose is to prepare the youth 
for when they grow up. I mean, I, th I think with regards to Judaic studies, yeah. the purpose is learning itself mm -hmm. has a purpose. Uh, learning Torah has a purpose, right. has a value. But in addition to that, school in general is meant to prepare the children for the future. And right. we want to provide them with a very bright future. And that includes being able to support themselves. Okay, I'm going to bring Amy then. So Amy, as stated by uh, the state system from the NYC DO DOE, all the way to the state house. What is their sort of lens on what the purpose of yeshivas are? Um, it depends on who you ask, mm. and it depends on whether you're looking at what's on the books or what's actually happening. Um, on the books, the purpose is to give them a substantially equivalent um, education, as you said. Right. Um, but generally, these yeshivas have not been overseen in any way. So it seems that in practice, they, the purpose is whatever the, the community wants it to be. So we're saying $60 million in a mix of state and municipal funds, but very little to no oversight. Well, let, let, me, let me clarify that. The, the yeshivas today are underfunded. Okay. And the public school system— To the tune of $60 million. Oh, that, that, that's, it's not even pennies on the dollar. Parochial schools got about nine. There are $22,000 that, yeah. that, that the city of New York allocates for mm -hmm. each child in the public school system. Perhaps it's too little, perhaps it's too much. Give I'm me not, that I'm number again? $22,000. Okay, so 22K a student we're working from the base. Correct. In the yeshivas, it's all funded primarily through, edu through tuition, what, what the parents gotcha. pay. On the lower end of the spectrum, it's $200 a month. Mm -hmm. On the higher end of the spectrum, it's $450 a month. The yeshivas that we're focusing on right now, primarily the Hasidic yeshivas. So A, they're underfunded. Right. So what I'm proposing is before we even have a discussion about the quality of the education, all the advocates, including uh, Mr. Muster, yeah. should first come to the yeshiva with a check and say, look, I understand that you're overburdened, you're collapsing, mm -hmm. you, have, you can't even pay the phone bill, you can't even pay the electricity bill, I'm not going to snitch on you yeah. or, or, or tell you how to run your school, but rather I'm going to come in and say, look, I'm going to subsidize the quality of the secular education because I want it to be enhanced. Had that happened, mm -hmm. you would be a hero today. But instead, he's calling for an investigation. And I should say and I'm still a pub considered a hero, by the way. Okay. A lot of people call well, me. Well, we'll take a poll on that. Take we, a poll. But I want to thank the New York City Department of Education mm -hmm. because Chancellor Farina, to her credit, said this is a partnership. Yeah. And we want to work collaboratively, and we want to work together. Mm -hmm. So I'm very heartened by what I hear from her. But to be I, sure, there are one-room schoolhouses in Appalachia where kids don't get $22,000 per student, and they can write and read proficiently. But, but yeah, but, but you can't compare the cost. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, if a yeshiva has to build a building, so construct a building— So how much does it cost to teach English for more than one hour? I don't, I don't know the numbers, but I can tell you that the yeshivas are suffering financially. So this is a they money are, problem, Naftali. It is 100% financially related. Okay. You could enhance the quality of the secular education. I won't dispute that. But before we come and try to attack either the motives or the leadership, let us come to the yeshivas and say, we are here to help you. So the number that you threw out, 60 million, right. do you know there are 100,000 plus yeah, in, children in, in the Brooklyn, in more the, than some school systems Correct, in the, in the yeshiva education system. Right. So I'm, I'm a product of the yeshiva education right. system. I still remember my first or second or third grade teacher telling me, do not start a sentence with but. <laughs> And, not with, and, not, and, and do not use run-on sentences. So did you receive more secular education then uh, than students are receiving now? I don't know. I, I received approximately, I would say, two hours a day. Okay. Yeah, That's several what I, decades ago, the education system was actually better than it's now. Yeah. So it, it has slowly deteriorated. But I just want to point something out. It is not 100% financial. It is not because, and proof is that the girls' schools actually provide a much better education, and they have the same finances. It's not a financial issue, and like you pointed out. And if someone were to choose to homeschool, too bad. You have to provide a proper education, even if you're poor. Yeah. You have no money. You have to provide a proper education. So no, 
It, it, first of all, I mean, the idea that I should come with a check is just, uh, no offense, why? but it's kind of ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? Because you can't ask you someone can't, like myself to come with a check. Not? What I could do is I could come to if the issue of you, you need question. to do but your do you job. Can, do you consider but, yourself part of the community? Absolutely, but so that's you, not, so then, that's so not then how you it works. Come to you don't the have, not a, not say, everything is money. Let, you don't always come with a check and there, say, there's an, here. There's so wait, let's let it then. How much would the check have to be for for the education circular to rise? You know, we had a whole debate. We had a debate in the state of New York education tax credit. Yeah. Everyone lined up to kill that. That would have put maybe, maybe a few hundred dollars a month yeah. in the pockets of some parents who qualify. So clearly, so money, clearly, then? clearly, the system is stacked against the yeshiva You're system. You're bringing in an issue they, of separation no, of no, church and state that it's is unrelated in, no, to no, our by the, It is constitutionally been, that's debatable. No, it's not debatable. And, 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 that, and it's not, definitely not that relevant. That was definitely part not, of the, not relevant. I just, part of the, I just the proved teacher to you. Union, yeah. Some of the teachers union were against it because they cannot tolerate to see any sort of public so I'm uh, gonna ask uh, assistance you, for the yeshiva. Working not, under the assumption that uh, that if it's you would have shown constitutional permissible. Up with the check. There's no, it, okay. That's not even part of the debate. It's, so it's it a broad debate. No, no, thing. it's a political it debate, debate no. not a constitutional no. No. debate. No. There are states mm -hmm. in the United States that have education tax credits. You spoke to Marcy Hamilton, right? I think Amy. Uh, but can I know jump Amy. In. There, to contextualize this a little bit, there were some parallels that folks saw between uh, the education that Amish people provide for their young people and tried to make their parallel to what's happening here in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, but some. So you, if we actually had this go up to the Supreme Court, we would see whether this is considered the same. Right. Um, Indeed, I, in um, that case, Yoder versus State of Wisconsin, I think um, it was. They said that it was okay that they stop, you know, formal book writing education at eighth grade, right. um, in order to continue the culture of the community because their education continued with agricultural education. So they were learning a trade right. that they could make money from. So. And, all, and so what um, advocates for better secular education in schools in yeshivas would probably say is they're not parallel because studying Jewish texts is not going to enable you to make money and mm -hmm. support yourself. Well, look, so okay, that, I want to go to you, though, happening. and say, uh, if those kids in Pennsylvania get to stop at eighth grade and then they have a subsequent agricultural education to continue their culture and it's a verifiable skill, then did you receive what you think was equivalent to an eighth grade education and what followed that to no. prepare you for life in your community? No, most Hasidic boys don't get an education that is as like an eighth grade education. If anything, it's like a fifth grade and some would argue that it's even much less than that. Uh, that's in elementary school. In high school or past the age of 13, mm -hmm. there's no general education whatsoever. Boys spend 14 hours a day in yeshiva, 14 hours a day. What is that, twice as much as public school kids, and they don't learn a single word of English. And by that, I mean they don't even speak English because they communicate in Yiddish and uh, some Hebrew and, and Aramaic, I believe the Talmud is. So, so they don't even pick up the language. And that's, that's probably one of the biggest violations that's, ha that's happening over there, is that the kids are not able to communicate in the language of the land. And it's necessary. Everyone agrees that it's necessary. When they grow up, they need to be able to go out there and communicate. And I, and I know Ezra also agrees with that. There were several things Ezra agreed with me. There was the, the, only issue, the only issue was the approach. And that we just discussed. He thinks that it, it all comes down to a check. I don't think it all comes down to money. It, the, the ha you have to follow the law. That comes first. No, no, one's, comes no one's advocating that, not following the law. So well, is this a lack of money or a lack of education I, is the I, problem? I clearly uh, agree that we need to enhance the quality of the of, of, the, of the secular education. And how much is that going to cost then? If I am not, I, I, I am not a uh, an expert. I am not in the education business, mm -hmm. but I can clearly tell you that my four hundred dollars a month yeah. that I'm paying for my son's education does not cover the costs that the yeshiva is. Uh, occurring. So you would kick that okay. back to the state. I'm telling. I'm telling shape? everyone who's watching this program, mm -hmm. the millions of people. If you care about the education of tens of thousands of children, yeah. and you want to have input, and you want to feel that you're contributing to society, advocate, urge that a government. So where's the money going then? Where Where is that four hundred dollars plus the sixty million I talked about? Going probably to an to over to the to the big pot, and that has to pay for the mortgage. That has to pay. For the for the teacher that has to pay for the Hebrew studies uh, curriculum, 
What is so Hafakan four hundred dollars? Yeah, I'm, I'm, some I'm of the money is geared towards I'm specific programs like Title One, for example. Title a lot of yeshivas now benefit from Title One, right. which injects millions and millions of dollars into the yeshivas specifically to bring boys up to speed, up to their grade level. Yeah, and okay. they do. And Title well, One is some do I, and some don't. So I, I've so heard of, of some yeshivas that aren't even the using that appropriately. Like, this week, so the that's problematic. Are struggling. Yeah, they are struggling. They are burdened by debt. We have tens of thousands of children. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of them are properly educated. I will say this over and over again. I agree that we need to enhance the quality of the secular education. Yeah. But let's, let's do it in, a, in the spirit of cooperation. Let's not point fingers and say, we got you. Got gotcha. you. Can I ask Yeah, you, Amy. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, it, when you talk about enhancing the quality, do you think that the time spent on secular education ought to be increased? And, and do you think that boys who are in high school ought to have some secular education in their school day? I think that every parent, and let's not let, I want to bring the parents into it, because, yeah. by the way, I never graduated high school. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll bear, anything, bear my soul here. I never, underst I never uh, uh, connected with math. I still remember my aunt trying to teach me math when I was 12 years old, yeah. to this very day, I go into a restaurant, I cannot figure out the 18% tax. Mm -hmm. And I tell, I'm the best tipper in New York City. I tell the, the waiter or the, you know, do the, do the tip, whatever you want. I'm intimidated by numbers. So are and, you fighting for the right for your kids to not know math? No, 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 I'm not fighting for that. But what I'm trying to say is that I believe that I'm a functioning member of society. I went to, uh, I studied a lot. Children need to be prepared mm -hmm. for when they graduate the school system. Taking Doesn't a that test, include knowing English? Oh, absolutely. No, speaking a, a proper English yeah. and knowing how to communicate is the most important tools that you can have when you enter society. Yeah. But it's not necessarily connected to taking a test. But I will not tell you how much no, time No, we're talking is about needed. instruction, not Oh, tests. absolutely. Instruction is very important. Gu guiding a child, mm -hmm. a teenager, whether that's preparing them for a livelihood, whether that's having a guidance counselor come in at age 16 and saying, let's evaluate what you as a teenager are good at. Yeah. I remember my, my, my father encouraging me to communicate with elected officials. And, and he was we're, he's a rabbi. We're closing and in I, on one minute, so I just want to know if you think that this and the DOE interceding and possibly the state is a threat to the culture of the Hasidim. No, I don't think so. In fact, most Hasidic people I speak to welcome this, this approach. So they why are many of them signing up and making they're it afraid. known? This is a community that, that a lot of it is characterized by fear. People are afraid to speak up. I speak to parents all the time and they tell me, you know, I, I congratulate you for doing it, I applaud you for doing mm -hmm. it, but I can't doing it, so thank Let me you tell for you something. doing it on behalf of my Jewish kids. people are I never afraid to speak up. Go uh, to any shul and any shabbos. My father is a rabbi. Don't be, don't be people ridiculous. People will tell you. I'm talking about Jewish he, people. No, Jewish no, no. Also Parents, why are there only 50 people, people, people Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I go to PTA meetings. I go to PTA meetings. I see mothers complaining to the principals. But isn't that what they complain in their insults? They do speak up, but something is still not happening. There is no one afraid to speak up Oh, that's up not true. That's not out. correct. Every, there is why do I speak to hundreds of people who say they're afraid to speak up? There is no one. Ezra, there is you live no in a one. different world. You can't even get that's sources, you are right? the same world. I am part no, of the community. No, you're not. Community. No, you're not. If anything, you, grew you, grew you left the family. Community. You grew up in a different family. I grew you just up said, as a regular no, family. No father encourages their son to speak to politicians like your father did. This is not the common thing. Every parent Don't pretend you are the average Hasidic member. That's not. That's just not the case. So then, Amy, politicians are afraid to speak up if the Jewish parents are. Daniel Drum, the guy who's in the middle of Jackson Heights with not a large voting block, is the lone voice standing saying and before we he need speak, to look at before this. He, before he speaks up, yeah. he should give me a call and I would give him a tour of every yeshiva that he wants to see. Oh, that would be wonderful. That in. would be wonderful. All right. Why, uh, I don't call me. I don't remember uh, drawing Invite me to, to We'd love invite to come me along. and the inspectors. Like we'll, all okay. we'll all do that in inspection. That would be nice. I will say We're that. And by the way, the, the chancellor a, didn't use the word inspector on purpose. Right. You see, you're trying to get back at the yeshiva. No, that's ridiculous. The chancellor is trying to work with the yeshiva. So that's 
encourage this, this her thing to do so. Now. I encourage just her to let to let you do answer so. that. If what would you be trying to get back at the yeshivas for? Just to answer that, so we can finish. I wouldn't. So it's kind of a ridiculous so, no, argument. You're not. It's trying like to it's get like back. me saying he's trying to get back at me. It's it's just it ridiculous. Seems that there's a certain no, vengeance, no and vengeance, I don't understand no why. You seem I to be up, very articulate. The yeshivas did a very good job. So are you, and you agree that we need to improve the education system, and so do I. We just disagree on the approach, and I think my approach is better. That's going to be the last word at the moment, but uh, you guys were awful, so you probably won't be back, right? <laughs> uh, thank you for the discussion. We'll definitely uh, be watching, and if that, in fact, does happen, we would love to come along. You invited the it's, council it's, member I would, and us I along would, for a tour. Tell me just, you tell me when, and I'll tell you where. Done. All right. Can I come, too? Uh, absolutely. I have no problem. Perfect. Amy. I wanted to say something that maybe you can yeah. say yeah, yeah. later. Oh, um, right. just still that on. Relax. We, oh, oh, we're still on TV. Oh, we are? Okay. I'm I just wanted to, to say that not a single politician would even let me interview them on the subject, except for Daniel Drum. You know, Dov Hyken is now talking to me about this. He said... No one has complained about it, so now he's he's willing to talk. But and, yet, and more he, so we're I, have I've a contacted him at his office many times. So thank Even you, after, and thank you.